All right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Sam Lepore again with the Sam Lepore Group here at Keller Williams and uh, with another edition of helping the small business here or uh, in, this, in this coronavirus that we're going through this crazy pandemic. So each week uh, or each day, or every other day it seems now that I've been uh, highlighting a local business um, here in our area to try to uh, spotlight what they're doing um, sometimes even vir virtually now, no, uh, virtually now. So um, I have, uh, today I have Jill Bonowitz with Meant to Be Home. She actually is a, a resident of Haddonfield um, and Jill and I uh, do a lot of business together. Jill has been helping my clients uh, for quite a bit now, uh, doing some staging and some uh, interior decorating uh, ideas uh, to get their homes ready for sale. Um, and even after the fact, too, to, um, to help uh, decorate their homes once they move in. So Jill's going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, we'll go through a, a lot of that and maybe ways to prepare your home for selling. Um, as I said in some other videos, inventory around in and around the area, Haddonfield, Morristown, Burlington, and Camden County is very low. Um, so people are showing their homes. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with it, maybe now's the time to get ready because once we do come out of this pandemic fully, it's going to, this real estate market's going to really explode. So I'm going to welcome Jill Bonowitz. How you doing, Jill? Thanks for uh, joining us this morning. And um, let's, we're going to go through some slides to uh, show people how they can get their home ready to sell. Great. Thanks so much, Sam, for having me. Um, yeah, we were, Sam and I were talking last week about, you know, the inventory, like he mentioned, and how everyone is spending a lot of time in their home right now. So we were just thinking about, you know, now is the time to kind of do some of those DIY projects and do some things in your home if you are thinking about listing, um, because we're all home right now, have a little more time to get to some of those projects that maybe, you know, you couldn't get to in the past. So I wanted to take you through kind of my kind of top tips, of how you can prep your home um, if you're planning to list, you know, in the coming weeks, months, you know, even six months from now, while you're home, you could start kind of tackling these things. So this is kind of my top tips, you know, that I talk to homeowners about as I'm doing staging consultations. So first and foremost, clean and declutter. Um, sounds pretty obvious, um, but the declutter part is so important. Um, and I don't just mean, you know, decluttering personal items and things like that. You also wanna declutter big bulky furniture, you know, maybe extra pieces that are in your home that, you know, maybe are making your home feel a bit more dated. You know, think about kind of each room in your home and, you know, take an inventory and think about maybe some things that you can kind of put to the side, you know, maybe donate or, you know, sell at a later date. Um, but you really want to go through each room in addition to cleaning, but also, again, looking at things that maybe you can move out of the way to really open up your space and make it as inviting as possible. Um, okay, so Jill, that's always my first thing when I go on a listing appointment or before I even walk into the home, I don't even have to see it. I, the first thing is always clean and declutter. That is, that is uh, for the most part, that is like the biggest, like you said, the biggest thing. Um, less is better, I always tell people. Yes, less is more. I always say that. And also, too, like closets and pantries and kind of all those storage spaces. You know, buyers will look in closets, in pantries, and you want to thin those out so that, you know, buyers don't feel that there isn't enough storage in the house. Um, you want them to be able to see how much space there is in that big master closet it shouldn't be stuffed to the gills. <laughs> so really pare that stuff down, maybe take out seasonal clothes, pack those away again so they can see the space and really not get bogged down with all of your personal stuff. Great. So the next thing is fresh neutral paint. I can't stress this enough. If you have dark data colors in your home, you know, colors that maybe were popular 10 years ago, just bring in some fresh neutral paint. Um, one of my go-to paints is Light Pewter from Benjamin Moore. It's a really soft cream that has some gray undertones and it really goes with everything. You know, if your house has a lot of tans in it, it goes with tan. If it has gray, it goes with grays. And it's just gonna lighten and brighten the space and make those listing pictures 
really shine um, because you don't want anyone to look at the listing pictures and say, oh, you know, we'd have to paint the whole house. And you then, want them to see it light, airy, and neutral. And then wallpaper as well, obviously, right? Yeah, so some wallpaper I think is okay. It depends, you know, when it was installed and how dated it is. But anything that's, you know, 10, 15 years ago where the patterns just aren't in style anymore, that could be a huge deterrent for buyers that they have to take down that wallpaper when they move in. So I yeah. would do that. I try to you know, stress to I try to stress to everybody, even if it's even if it's one room of wallpaper. You know, uh, I have uh, I have a great painter uh, and vendor that I use that uh, makes it clean and easy and neat and really not a, not that expensive. Um, so it, it's a the, the wallpaper, the the bright flowery ten to fifteen year old paper. Got to go. Got to go. That's right. Good money. Because it good gets, money to be spent to get yes. ready. So in order for buyers to visualize themselves in your home, it needs to be kind of that blank slate for them to say, oh, you know what? We could paint it the color we like. We could add our own wallpaper. Um, but again, they can visualize themselves in the space. And if it's neutral, if it's a fresh coat of paint, um, it, really, it really helps. Um, so the next tip is really defining rooms. So you probably have some rooms in your house, you know, maybe a bonus space or a spare bedroom that might be kind of that catch-all for everyone's stuff. You want to get all that stuff out of there and really give the room a defined purpose um, because I think home office are so important right now. So if you have that extra space, you know, stage it with a writing desk and a chair. You know, a few accessories go a long way to show buyers that you have the space for, you know, maybe the dedicated home office or a playroom or a bonus family space, because that's what buyers are really looking for is that extra space, especially if it's a family. Good point. All right. And then uh, make the minor repairs are next, I say. Yeah. So you don't want buyers, again, to be distracted with little repairs as they walk through your home. So take care of those little things now um, so you don't have to, you know, you don't want buyers to be scared yeah, you know, walking going, through and seeing we're going through these homes and they're looking, you know, they're especially in the higher end market, they're looking, um, you know, and they're noticing the doorknob is falling off or, uh, you know, yeah. something simple, uh, yeah. get it done because that could basically cost you nothing and it could, uh, could save the sale. Yeah, even like small dings in the wall, paint touch-ups. If you're taking down personal photos and it leaves a whole wall of screws in the wall, you know, take those all out, patch and paint them. Again, you just want it to, you know, be as move-in ready as possible for buyers. And again, you don't want them distracted with those types of things. Um, and then last, certainly not least, is curb appeal and landscaping. And it's the perfect time of year to get out there, to add some seasonal plants, to mulch, to do that cleanup. Um, and in addition to the curb appeal, you know, also look at your front door. Does it need a new coat of paint? What about your shutters, power washing? You know, those things that are pretty easy to do, but will make a big impact. Yeah, I think that's a big one, Jill. Uh, this, I'm, I'm really big on the curb appeal. You know, any weeds sticking out, um, a lawn not cut. You know, it's got to look, it's got to look really beautiful, especially for photos, because we have to have a good online presence today, you know, the way uh, yeah. our photos look. So um, that's important. And it's the, and it's the first impression too, when you're walking up, you mentioned the front door, you know, it, it, that is very important because people are going to form an opinion as soon as they get out of their car. Yeah, absolutely. So it, uh, it's a big one. Okay, so these are the kind of the top tips, things you can be doing now while we're home. Um, and then once your home is prepped, you know, obviously I'm all about staging homes. Um, again, buyers need to visualize themselves in your home. And the best way to do that is to stage it, you know, to what I like to call hide the evidence, you know, take away all those things of everyday living um, so that again, it's just set up with the necessary furniture, with some beautiful accessories, and buyers can really imagine themselves there and not be um, kind of focused on your personal items that might be around the house. So I thought I'd take you through a few photos of different rooms that I've staged and kind of give you some tips. So in the kitchen, obviously, you know, everyone has a lot of kitchen gear, appliances and things. You really want to get them off the countertop let buyers see how much space you have 
and stash all those things either in the lower cabinetry, in a pantry, um, and even I tell people during showings, you know, you can take kind of a big laundry bin and kind of shove all that counter stuff right in the bin and take it on with you when you leave the house. Right. So it, again, you know, make the pictures look really light, airy, not cluttered with a bunch of appliances so they can see your kitchen and see all the space that you have. Yeah, no magnets on the refrigerator. That's always a favorite of mine. So yes. The cluttered bulletin board with all the millions of things hanging off of it. You just want to thin that out. Again, let them focus on the space and not on your personal items. So that's the kitchen, um, the living room. So that's kind of where everyone's hanging out these days. Um, my tip for you is to really look around the space and think about the furniture that you have. Do you have a lot of extra pieces kind of clogging up the room? You really only need the sofa, some accent chairs, the coffee table. Get rid of all the other bulky pieces if you can. Again, so they could appreciate the space, the size of the room, and you know it's just going to make the listing pictures better and it's going to help buyers when they walk through especially if you're blocking like a walkway area or a doorway or something like that or an extra rocker in the corner it just yeah. it's not needed you got to get rid of it yeah and it might not feel comfortable to you as you're living there because you've maybe always had that piece there but just think about it in terms of marketing and merchandising your home it's about setting the stage giving just enough you know, furniture in the room so that buyers can envision the space. But again, you know, those extra pieces, they're, they're just not necessary as you're, you know, preparing to list. Um, in the dining room, you just want to keep it simple. Um, you know, this is a new construction home that I staged. Um, obviously, there's no bulky china closet. There's no bulky serving piece. Those types of pieces are very heavy and dated. Um, young buyers, you know, are just not interested in China closets these days. Um, so is it, if there's a way to move those out um, to make space in the room to really free it up, I am absolutely all for that. Um, and just a simple runner across your table, if you can, you know, do some fresh flowers or greenery, always looks great in the pictures. And shrink that, and shrink that table down, right? Take those yes. leaves out, make that room look bigger. Yeah, as long as you have six chairs, I would say that's perfect. If you only have four, that's fine too. But you don't need to have every leaf in the table and have eight chairs. Um, because again, it's going to make the room feel really small. All right, so the bedroom. So the key here is fresh, neutral bedding. You know, you can get a bed in a bag, you know, pretty inexpensively online through Wayfair, Target. You know, something light, neutral with some accent pillows and just decluttering the nightstands, the tops of dressers, just keep it everything really simple and clean. Um, it'll show better in the pictures. And again, we'll just help buyers, you know, see themselves in that space. We're noticing um, the theme of the, the gray walls and the white trim. You know, that's, that's what everybody wants these days. We have to appeal to those, the, the mass of, uh, of the buyers out there. Yeah, because with those kind of colors, you know, anyone can come in and put their twist on it. They can bring in any accent color they want. It's really neutral and can work, you know, for the masses. Okay, so bathrooms. So it's really all about white, nice, fluffy towels, bringing in a nice plant, a candle. Again, just making it feel as spa-like as possible and removing, you know, toiletries, um, kind of curling irons, you know, all that good stuff that we use every day. Stash that all under the, um, the vanity, or again, stash it in a basket and put it in the closet so that again, it has that spa-like feel. Um, it doesn't have personal items. And again, buyers can say, wow, this is a huge, big, nice bathroom. And you know, they wanna make an offer. Yeah, it's a beautiful bath, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. <laughs> Okay, so I thought I'd show you a couple before and afters of um, some advice that I've given to homeowners and kind of how we've transformed their spaces. So this is a kitchen in Haddonfield. Um, I helped the homeowner you know, pick new colors and have her cabinets refinished. Um, she was on the market for quite a while and not getting any action. Um, the kitchen cabinets were really high quality, nice wood cabinets but younger buyers, they don't want those wood tones. Right. So we neutralized the kitchen with white cabinetry and then did the island gray. 
And it made, even the countertop wasn't new, but it just had a whole new life with the lighter colors. Um, I thought this was a great before and after of how a little bit of paint really goes a long way. Yeah, and if these cabinets are done professionally and painted professionally, I mean, there's there's special paint out there now for these cabinets. It, it really looks nice, and sometimes it's very, very hard to tell. You really have to look hard sometimes. It is. I went back to this house and staged the shelves after it was done, and I was just so impressed with the quality. You know, like you said, if they're professionally sprayed, done by the right painter, I mean, they're amazing, and they really look brand new. Yeah, that's great. So that's a really um, important thing for the kitchen is to think about your wood tones and if there's anything you can do, again, without gutting your kitchen, kind of those small fixes that we can do to have it show better. Um, this is an example of a house in Mount Laurel that wasn't selling. And again, we didn't even change the paint or the carpet or anything. All we did was remove the dated furniture and bring in some more contemporary furniture. And you can kind of see the side by side here. And even in the dining room, we kept the dining room table and chairs, but removed the bulky china closet, hung some neutral artwork, um, brought in some blue, um, some color to kind of jazz it up and to appeal to younger buyers. And you know, after relisting it, this really made a difference. Young family was under contract on this house um, after it had been sitting for quite a while you know, with no action. Yeah, that looks amazing. That is a, a, a great transformation there. It just goes to show you what furniture alone can just, just do. Yeah, because I think young buyers who see the picture on the left as they're flipping through homes are just going to say, oh, that's a dated house. That's not for us. Whereas if you see the picture on the right, it's, you know, styles that they're probably more interested in. And it's like, oh, wow, that, you know, that house looks great. And all of a sudden, you know, they're scheduling is showing. Right, so it really good. makes a big impact. And the same goes for the master bedroom in the same home. So working with the homeowner's furniture, switching out the lamps and the bedding and removing some extra pieces that were in the room, like a dated recliner we got rid of. I mean, it looks like a completely different bedroom it set. Does. That is like super simple changes there. And you can, the side by side is awesome. I know. So it's it's not hard. It's just kind of looking at each room, you know, under a lens and saying, okay, what can we do in this room to kind of lighten it, brighten it, um, make it feel more fresh and updated. And, you know, it's as simple as, you know, a bed in a bag, a piece of artwork, some new lamps. Um, it's not, you know, high priced items. It's just, again, you know, bringing in the right pieces and, and setting the stage. Yeah, that's amazing. So any, that was kind of all the content I had there? for today, Sam. Okay, great. So another thing that I wanted to mention too, uh, Jill, is, you know, you can obviously work with anyone's budget, right? I always tell people, if you have a vacant home, you don't have to stage every single room. And quite yeah. often you probably don't, right? So it's the main, yeah. it's the main spaces, like the kitchen, the master, the yeah, the kitchen, um, living and dining room, I think are the most important, especially if they're open concept, because some buyers really struggle with, they just see the vacant photos or they show up for the showing and they're like, oh, I'm not sure how I would set this up. They really can't envision kind of how to utilize the space. So I think for open concept, those rooms are really important. And you can do the master bedroom or you don't have to, again, depending on budget. If it's a large space, and it shows well, you know, and people can envision a king size bed fitting there. You know, if budget's an issue, you don't even have to do the master. Um, it's something we can add. And even a quick consultation too, right? You'll walk through like you've done with several of my uh, clients who will walk through and just give your recommendations. Jill will uh, send you a whole, um, you know, a, a spreadsheet and, uh, and some furniture that she might recommend. Um, yeah. And you do it yourself, right? So, um, yeah. And that could be very economical that way. So, yeah, and I've been doing some of those through FaceTime, you know, the past couple of weeks. It's not as great as being there in person, but, you know, people can take you through the home through FaceTime. I give them my recommendations. And if I feel there's specific things they should order, like new bedding, um, you know, like a writing desk for that home office, you know, I'm finding things on Wayfair, Overstock, you know, different sites that are still shipping right now. Um, that are really affordable. Yeah, so all done virtually that you were doing in the home before it can just be done through FaceTime now. Um, 
and then they can, you know, uh, do the work at their leisure and get that home ready for yeah. uh, for sale. That's awesome. All right, Jill, I really uh, I really appreciate it. Um, how can uh, how can everybody reach you? So I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's meant to be home. The B is like a bumblebee, B-E-E. -E. Um, you can message me through there. Um, I'm right in Haddonfield. I'm nice and local. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to get into people's houses sometime soon, you know, when this all ends. But until then, you know, virtually I'm, I'm still available for, you know, redesign work as well as staging uh, consults. And we are still staging vacant homes, just, you know, taking the necessary precautions, but not going into any occupied homes at this point. Right. Okay. All right, Jill, well, I really appreciate it. I know this market is, is about to take off here uh, as we come out of this pandemic. And uh, I hope so. yeah, we're both, we're both going to be really busy. We're starting to pick up right now uh, quite yeah. a bit. So, I, Thanks I, so I, much, Sam. I appreciate yeah, it. I wish you all the best and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Sam.